Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game News. It is September 14th, 2020 and these are the top stories of the day. To kick things off, I want to take a look at the NPD results from August 2020. NPD is a group that tracks hardware and software data in the United States. And since I love my stats and I love my hardware and software data, uh, I'm going to include this in today. It only happens once a month in the US, whereas in Japan with Famitsu we get it weekly. So without further ado, let's check it out. These are the top 20 best-selling games of August 2020. As you can see, Madden's at number one, Madden NFL 21 that is, because it is a seasonal game and whether the mass majority of people like it or not, complain about it or not, apparently they can't get enough because Madden has charted, has been the number one best-selling game of every month in years of Madden releases. Madden game comes out on a year, safe to say, that given month of release, primarily August, it's going to be the top number one best-selling game of the month in the United States. Pretty crazy. So, it looks like EA is in a pretty good position with the NFL to have that exclusivity deal because they keep on selling games that do a lot of money and unless if NFL wants to break partnership or make it something that's uh, available for, for other developers to tackle like it was back in the day, uh, for the foreseeable future, EA will probably retain that NFL exclusivity with Madden games. Um, next up, number two, we've got UFC 4, followed by Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Ghost of Tsushima, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Ring Fit Adventure. I mention Ring Fit Adventure quite often because if it's a game that's in stock, it sells really well. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Paper Mario the Origami King, Mortal Kombat 11 round out the top 10. Some of those make sense. Big titles, stuff like Ghost of Tsushima, right? Still fairly new. Some of the games here, like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, evergreen titles, but it's still pretty impressive because it's, you know, three years old and still charting. And then you literally have the three-and-a-half-year-old game, probably the oldest game on this list that is doing the most well, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at number 11. There's actually a rank, there's actually a rank, there's actually a fun stat of Breath of the Wild, and not only is it the best-selling Legend of Zelda game ever for Nintendo, but is the 10th best-selling game of any entry that Nintendo has put out from any franchise ever in the United States. So think of all of the games, Super Mario Brothers, Wii Sports, uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario 64, a lot of Mario's in there, but Mario's very popular. And then at number 10 is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, so props to Zelda. Got The Last of Us Part 2 and Minecraft PlayStation 4 Edition. PGA Tour 2K21, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe coming at number 15. Super Mario Party, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Super Mario Odyssey, an almost three-year-old game. Final Fantasy VII Remake and Luigi's Mansion number three. Like it says, digital sales not included. In terms of eShop, you're not going to get eShop data represented here. That's why there's a little asterisk next to the Nintendo games. Speaking of Nintendo games, they make up a good portion of this chart. So any Nintendo, Nintendo doomed articles are totally off. Nintendo's doing just fine. Next up, these are the top 10 best selling games year to date. So in 2020, the number one best selling game of the year so far in the United States is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's not taking into consideration eShop of Animal Crossing New Horizons, which might make this go number one. But for now, based on physical, Animal Crossing comes in at number two, The Last of Us Part Two at number three, Final Fantasy VII Remake at number four, Ghost of Tsushima at number five. Madden, despite only being out for a couple of weeks in the month of August, for the whole year is already at number six. That's pretty impressive. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot at number seven, MLB Show, 20, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number 9, Mortal Kombat 11 at number 10. That makes up the top 10 best-selling games for the year. Another fun stat when it comes to hardware is that 
This was the highest August dollar sales for a hardware platform in US history. And it is thanks to Nintendo Switch, where its dollar sales exceeded August 2008 sales of Wii. Now think about that. 12 years passed from that August 2008 to August 2020. And we held on to that number one spot of best selling, most highest revenue, I should say, of a hardware in a month of August for 12 years. A lot of platforms have come out, a lot of different big games that help bump up hardware for that month, but no, we reign supreme until now. Nintendo's own Nintendo Switch passed their own record. So that's pretty impressive. It also says here that as of August 2020, unit sales of Nintendo Switch more than doubled August 2019. I shouldn't have said as of August. Just in August 2020, unit sales of Nintendo Switch more than doubled the August 2019 total. That's crazy because Nintendo was all, already on fire in 2019 and to see that this summer it more than doubled the unit sales is very impressive. Now, I do talk a couple of about a couple of different things. There's revenue and then there's actual units sold. Um, Nintendo Switch is one of the best selling units of hardware ever for the month of August, but the number one ever is the Nintendo DS back in 2009. It sold around 553,000 units, over half a million units in the month of August. Nintendo Switch for 2020 is approximately 482,000. So you can see, didn't quite beat the Nintendo DS level in terms of how many physical units were sold, but it is number one in terms of how much money was made because obviously Nintendo Switch consoles cost more than a Nintendo DS. So by selling 482,000 for Switch, you're making more money. Nintendo's making more money, bigger number being spent from the market on a Nintendo Switch overall than the respective number for DS. But still, uh, pretty impressive stuff all around. A couple of other fun stats. Um, we went over we went over Madden already. Talked a little bit about UFC. You know, it's doing well for EA. I personally think that UFC games are fun, but I would like to see more impact. As I'd like to see more collision, feel the movement of the fighters being better, more realistic, more fluid, better animation. I think is one of the things. But overall, they did a lot with the UFC. Now that's just personal opinion, that's not really sales related, but typically if games are good, they should sell well. Like I said, people can make that argument about um, Madden, plus or minus in terms of do its sales equate its quality or not, but like I said, that's opinionated. Um, we talked about Zelda Breath of the Wild, Nintendo's 10th best selling game of all time in the United States. and I think that'll do it. That's enough talk. I try to keep my sales talk short because I know it's not for everybody, but it's my passion. So I like to introduce it into these conversations in video game news. So thank you for bearing with me. Next up in video game news, we get a look at some pretty cool stuff right here from the Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X. Um, here's a look at both boxes that Microsoft's gonna have in stores this November 10th. I think they look pretty cool. They look pretty slick, basic, you know, um, growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, mid 90s and so forth. I miss boxes that were fun, like when I did my opening slash unboxing of my Nintendo Super Mario 64 Puma shoes. That shoe box reminded me of the Nintendo 64 box, the fun machine. Like, I like boxes like that. Um, this is definitely more slick. You know, it's pretty attractive. And I get why Microsoft's doing it because it looks like a piece of equipment that's gonna be in your living room instead of a fun video game mach machine that's bright and stuff like that that is for the bedroom, for the game room. But Nintendo 64 was actually a black console with a gray controller, but the box was still colorful. That was kind of the perception, the image. It was just fun and bright and colorful. This is more slick. 
that's kind of where the industry is going with you know slick hardware design and slick boxes but that being said even though i like the colorful stuff i also appreciate this it's elegant it's nice and um, we'll see how it does now i touched on this the other day and i've noticed that people are pretty confused with the whole xbox series s doing a better job at playing Xbox 360 and Xbox One games than the standard Xbox One, but it will only be updating Xbox One games up to the Xbox One S level and not the Xbox One X level. That will be related for the Xbox One X and the Xbox Series X. Now, did I lose you? If so, don't worry about it. I was just kind of having fun, but that is the reality. Everything I said is true. That's where this terminology breakdown is crazy and for a lot of people it's going to be kind of confusing when they enter the you know GameStop Best Buy Walmart this holiday season you know but if you did follow me then you're probably hardcore enough of a gamer that that's why you're watching this 15 minute discussion on video game news but hopefully everybody hardcore and kind of new to watching somebody talk about video games on the internet for 15 minutes at a time hopefully y'all are having a good time and last thing in video game news today is oh my friends at limited run games did it again here is their special classic edition of doom 64 originally released on nintendo 64 but now is out for modern consoles you could get this on nintendo switch you could get this on playstation 4. here you have a commemorative non-functional metal cartridge that looks pretty awesome right there looks like doom 64's cover art you get a case booklet, nice reversible uh, poster, and yeah, it's coming out September 25th. You could pre-order it. I like it. For $55, that's nice. Physical editions of games are always cool. Limited run games always does a nice job. So yeah, I'll probably be checking this one out. And that does it today for video game news. Let me know. What did you think of uh, the August NPD sales data? Were you impressed? What were you impressed of? Did you buy a Nintendo Switch in August or some other system? Let me know. What do you think of the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X boxes? Oh my gosh, it never ends. And um, what do you think of the whole confusion, potentially, behind all of these different names of the Xbox family of systems and what each one can do and so forth? And finally, what do you think of this Doom 64 Classic Edition box? All right, that does it for video game news. If you are tuning in now and you made it to the end of the video, if you're interested, check out what I put up yesterday on YouTube. It is a Super Mario Brothers 35th anniversary tribute done really uniquely, I think, which is with a, which is via, um, a Mario 8-bit mosaic and a Superstar, aka Starman mosaic that I created by hand with my wife and my son and my daughter to be put into my newly replastered pool. I think it's awesome. Check it out on YouTube. It's the video right before this one if you're watching them chronologically. And let me know what you think because soon, if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow, within the next couple of days, it's going to be in the middle of the pool and it's going to look awesome. All right, thank you everyone for your time. Take care. This is PGN with Video Game News signing out. See you tomorrow. Bye.